Hi everyone and welcome to today's triple play option strategy presentation. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trade that I placed on the other day that 99% of all traders would absolutely be envious of. And in fact, this is the type of trade that I've been ridiculed for by a few so-called gurus in the option industry. But the reality is most traders simply don't know how to place on these kinds of trades. And this is one of the trades that I was filled on the other day based on a strategy that executes one of the most effective option approaches on the planet. Now what you're seeing on the screen is a risk-free projection graph. This is a projection graph that is projecting the profit or loss of the option trade based on the final day of the trade and based on where the underlying market is. And this particular one was in SPY. And you'll notice here that the minimum gain to the downside is projected at about $40. In fact, if stocks crash, if SPY crashes and goes to zero, I will make $40 on this trade. The minimum profit projection to the upside is about $100. And that you can see that that's in the zone between 300 and 302. Now, technically, the profit potential is unlimited to the upside, but there's only about two days left on this trade. And there's just really not any kind of realistic probability that we're going to see the market move up to 302, 304, 305, and into that unlimited profit potential. And so I'm not even going to show it on the graph. And then in between the profit potential at around, uh, at between 300 and 302 and the minimum profit potential to the downside is a profit peak. And this profit peak is actually projecting to be over $400. So no matter what, as you can see here, this trade is projected to be a profit and a significant one at that. So there's no risk projected in this particular trade. And I want to remind you that these are actual fills, not hypothetical. I don't deal in hypothetical. But this isn't even the best trade that I took the other day. And I'll get to that here in a minute. But these trades are available almost all the time for those who know where to find them and how to trade them. Perhaps the most shocking aspect of my approach to options is that I never reference the Greeks. I do not reference the delta, the theta, the beta. I never reference the Greeks when deciding on an option trade to take. So before I get to into this trade and what it is, let me cover a few important pieces to the puzzle. The first thing you need to understand is that the most effective way to trade options is by understanding warped PPD. Warped PPD is the number one contributing factor to profitable options trading. And I cover what's called the power of PPD in a video entitled the same, and you can watch it for free at paydaystocks.com. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly touch on the power of PPD in this presentation to provide you a foundation to the trade that I'm going to fully reveal before we get done with today's presentation. Now the PPD stands for price per day and specifically I'm looking at extrinsic value or time value. So for example if an option is at the money with five days left and is priced at $100 then the PPD or the price per day is at $20. And since it's at the money, this is nothing but time value. So the price per day is time value and is based on the average time value per day based on the current price. Or if I have an option that is at the money that has 20 days left until expiration and the price of that option is 200, then the PPD for that option is $10 PPD. So I have two options. Option number one has a PPD of $20 and option number two has a PPD of $10. So my question to you is which is the more expensive option and which is the cheaper option? Well, based on PPD, option number one is the more expensive option and option number two is the cheaper option. In fact, option number one is twice as expensive as option number two when it comes to PPD while option number two is twice as expensive as option number one with regard to the price. So you can see here the price of option number two is more expensive, but the PPD of option number two is cheaper. And this is critical. Here is an exact example of several ATM option prices and their PPD values. 
all the options on this list are the same strike they're at the money so option number one it has one day left and it's priced at a buck twenty that means that in that one day the average PPD is hundred and twenty dollars the option with eight days left is priced at 355 so you divide that 355 by eight and you come up with forty four dollars PPD and then the third option has 15 days left it's priced at 490 you divide 490 by 15 days and you come up with a PPD of $32. And you can go down the list and you come down to 36 days left. It's priced at 785. You divide 785 by 36, you come up with $22 PPD. So look at the difference between the one day PPD and the 36 day PPD. The one day PPD is actually almost six times bigger than the 36 day PPD option. It's that much more expensive based on a single day. However, it is actually much, much more. The average PPD over the next seven days for the 36-day option is actually only $13. Notice the price of the option is $7.85. If you divide that by 36 days, then you come up with $22 PPD. However, we know based on just this this simple list here that the one day option when the 36 day option has only one day left guess what it's going to be valued at if it's still at the money approximately 120. so we know that over the next seven days that ppd is going to be something less than 22. and in fact since we have weekly options here we can take the 29 day option subtract it from the 36 day option Right, so it's 785 minus 690 and divide it by 7, and that comes up with the 7-day PPD for the 36-day option. So instead of a, a $22 PPD, the actual PPD over the next 7 days per day is only at $13. That makes the PPD difference between the 1-day option and the 36-day option 9.23 times bigger. 9.23 times bigger. That is incredible. And here is the overriding principle you need to remember when trading weekly options. And it doesn't matter what option strategy you want to trade. You want to buy cheap PPD options and sell expensive PPD options. This one principle alone is worth more than you have paid for all option related books or educational courses in options combined and my email box my inbox is filled literally filled with traders who have emailed me and said this i've been trading options for 20 years 30 years 15 years 10 years and this is by far the best approach that i've ever seen in options and i've never seen anyone else teach it this principle alone is worth more than what you have paid for all option related books or educational courses and options combined however this is not the only principle for maximizing option profits while minimizing the risks the second biggest contributing factor to harnessing the power of options is anyone want to guess price movement Price movement is the second most important factor when dealing with options. Because let's face it, markets don't stay the same. Markets move up and they move down and then they move back again. And then sometimes they make a giant move in one direction. And there are two approaches to option trading when it comes to market movement, two basic approaches. These two approaches are number one, you have to account for the market movement. You simply account for market movement. And then the second approach is where you utilize or leverage the market movement within the option strategy. Both can be very effective approaches to trading options depending on the type of market conditions that exist. But these are in the context of taking advantage of the power of PPD. And someone might say, well, if you just simply buy an option, you're leveraging the price movement. Yes, that is absolutely true. But what you're not doing is you're not taking advantage as the foundation of your option strategy, the power of PPD. If you buy an option, 
you have negative PPD. And so it's always in the context of first and foremost, the foundational aspect of, of trading options is that you take advantage of the power of warped PPD and then you take advantage of the price movement. You either account for market movement or you leverage market movement. So here is an actual example of what's called my 911 emergency trade approach that is specifically designed to take advantage of high volatility in SPY. And again, this was an actual trade that netted about $930 a few weeks back when SPY was uh, trading around the 240 area. And I want you to notice how this particular trade takes into account possible price movement. Now, in this particular instance, if the market moves up, and it can move up quite a bit, it was trading at around 240, it can move up all the way about to 260, and there was only two or three days left on this trade. It could have moved up all the way to 260, and it's still making money. To the downside, it doesn't start losing money until around 230, and even when it does, it's very small. The risk is very limited and very small. Meanwhile, it has almost a thousand dollar profit potential. And in fact, this trade closed out and netted $930 on this trade. Now, this is a trade that simply takes into account price movement. In other words, it gives the underlying price a lot of room to move and still be profitable. That's what I'm talking about when we're talking about a option strategy that takes into account price movement, but that doesn't necessarily leverage price movement. So this trade didn't utilize or leverage market movement, but it did account for market movement. Okay, so that's one example. This brings up one last principle, though, that needs to be covered before I show you the trade that I made a small killing on this week, because the trade that I made a small killing on does, in fact, leverage price movement. But I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, if you take a look at this trade, that this doesn't look like it made a small killing. And if this were it, if this was the end of the story, that would be the case. But I will get to that part as well here in a second. So that brings me to my third principle that you need to take into consideration when dealing with option trades and option strategies. And that principle is the change in volatility. And here is the rule of thumb, if you will. This is how this works. And I'm going to preface this that this only works this way with any stock market index option. So OEX, uh, SPY, QQQ, IWM, those types of markets or ETFs, this is how this works. This is not the rule of thumb with individual stocks. And there's a reason for that. I'm not going to get deep into that today, but I do want to make sure that you understand that this is how SPY works. And since most of my trades are in SPY, this is where it's important. So here's how volatility works. When SPY moves down, option volatility increases. When SPY moves up, option volatility decreases. And when SPY stagnates, option volatility also decreases. This is how it works. Period. End of story. You have to understand this if you're going to trade option strategies in SPY. And I know most traders want a one-size-fits-all strategy. I've talked. I've been in the industry a long time. I've talked with thousands of traders um, on the phone, at conferences, at seminars over the years. And believe me. <laughs> I know that you guys want a one-size-fits-all strategy. Believe me, I wish there was one too. But I need you to listen to me very carefully. If you try to force a one-size-fits-all strategy onto the options market, you're going to get killed. What you want, what I want, cannot exist. It simply cannot exist exist. And so the sooner you embrace this, the sooner you'll start piling up the profits in the account. Because the sooner you embrace this, the more you'll be able to utilize it for your benefit. But here is why what we want 
cannot exist. When SPY moves down, option volatility increases. When SPY moves up, option volatility decreases. And when SPY stagnates, option volatility decreases. That's why what we want cannot ever exist. It is literally impossible to have a one-size-fits-all strategy in the options world when you're talking about weekly options in SPY. And let me explain it just in a slightly different way and really tell you what it really actually means. When SPY moves down, option prices increase. Relative option prices. And I'll explain that. But when SPY moves up, option prices decrease. And when SPY stagnates, option prices decrease. In other words, if I have an at-the-money option and the market is trading at 300 and there's five days left, that at-the-money option is going to be cheaper. It's going to be less expensive than if SPY moves down to 250 next week and the at-the-money option with five days left is going to be more expensive at that point. So as the market moves down, the relative options become the relative price of options becomes more expensive. As it moves up, the relative price of options become less expensive. And when SPY stagnates, the relative price of options also decrease. So when option prices are cheap, there are certain option spreads that are fantastic, but are impossible to place when option prices are expensive. And when option prices are expensive, there are some option spreads that are out there that, that are absolutely out of this world incredible that you couldn't pay me to take when option prices are cheap. And then when option prices are somewhere in between, like they are right now at the time of this presentation, there's a mesh of the two types of option trades that are available. So I have three basic strategies that take advantage of the different, that are designed to flourish, I should say, during the three different phases of volatility within SPY. So my 911 emergency trade strategy is great. I mean, it's absolutely fabulous when SPY moves down and volatility is higher. Profit Stacker, which is in the orange area, which is where we are right now, is a solid opportunity, and I'll show you why here in a second, uh, for taking advantage of option prices. And then Option Insanity has some incredible option opportunities when prices are cheaper. Now, right now, we are in the orange area. And when we're in the orange area, there's kind of a mesh between the three basic option strategies, but with an emphasis on Profit Stacker. And that's where we are right now. So 911 emergency, if I want to take you back to accounting for price action or leveraging price action, 911 emergency trades account for price movement, right? That's the big trade that I showed you a few minutes ago that netted $930. It accounts for price movement. Option insanity also accounts for price movement, but profit stacker, it's different. It leverages price movement. And it is a, a very effective approach for doing so. And right now we have volatility decreasing because the market has been moving higher generally, but it's basically stagnating in the 275 to 295 range. In fact, the last three weeks, we've basically been in this range. So the trend, the last movement has been higher and it moved up into this range and then it stagnated in this range. And so we're seeing volatility decrease, both because the market was moving up and then it stagnated, and that's what we see. And what you see here is a chart of the ATR. This is a 14 ATR average true range, or the average movement in SPY on a daily basis over the last 14 days. And you can see before we had this coronavirus uh, scare come into the marketplace, that the average true range actually was trading just above $2. That was it. The average market movement on a daily basis was about $2. But then when the market started crashing, we saw the average true range skyrocket, go all the way up to almost $20. Insane. That's when 911 emergency trades are the best. 
But since then, we've kind of stagnated. We've been moving back up and stagnating, and you can see that the average true range has dropped tremendously. And so now we're at about six or seven dollars average true range. And so what we have is we have a decrease in option prices or overall volatility, but we still have a pretty high ATR, which means that there's some market movement going on. That's where Profit Stacker comes into play. And that's the trade that I'm going to show you today. It's a variation of my Profit Stacker approach. So this, again, is the trade that I've been talking about. And this is a trade that utilizes, number one, warped PPD and leverages price movement to build or stack profits. Okay. Now, how does this work? I want to show you how this works. This is not how this trade started. This is how this trade started out. This particular trade started out with a projection to the downside, minimum projection to the downside of about $250 and a risk to the upside of about $500. And for some of you that you may say like, well, that's way too much risk to start off with. Well, I'll get to that here in a second, but to give you the full context of this particular trade, you'll notice that the market can move up. At the time it was taken, the market was trading around 292, and the market can move up. In fact, it can move up all the way to about 298 before it even touches break even. And there's only two days left on this trade. And remember, the market has been moving higher. In fact, it's moved, it's, uh, moved significantly higher over the last five days the day that this trade was taken. And so while the market's trading around 292, it can go all the way up to about 298 over the next two days and I'll still make money. So the actual probability of losing money uh, to the upside, uh, the maximum risk, and seeing the market go all the way to 305, very, very, very unlikely. But that's only part of the story. Let me get to this trade and tell you exactly what this trade is and then I'll give you the rest of the story as well. So I placed on the above trade and what I did is immediately after it was filled I placed on another order that would turn the trade into what you see here at the bottom of the page. So the initial trade started off with this risk graph at the top, the projection graph at the top. And once it was filled, I immediately placed another order that then turned it into this trade below. Again, the order is placed immediately. And all I needed was for the market to move down about a point or remain stagnant for about a day. And I would have been filled on this third trade or this uh, second trade, excuse me. So this is the exact trade that I took. Exact fills, exact details. I was short to May 1st, 295 calls and long to May 4th, 299 calls for a total credit of $2 or a credit of $1 based on a one lot. So short one, long one would have been a credit of $1. I was in two and the total credit was $2, which means that the minimum profit potential on this trade was $200 no matter what. I'd make money if the market stagnates, if the market went nowhere, I'd make money if the market moved up. The only way that I would lose is if the market moved and closed up above around 298, two days from the day that I placed on this trade. Okay, that was the initial trade. As soon as this was filled, I immediately placed a buy order to buy one May 4th, 297 call at a cheaper price. What do I mean by cheaper price? Well, if I had gone ahead and bought three, or, or let's say uh, the 297 call at the exact same time, of this initial core trade, then I would have paid about $2.30 for it. However, what I did was I placed the order to buy it at a buck 60. All right. So this is Trade Partner. This is the platform that I use. If you're not uh, familiar with Trade Partner, 
wow it is a tremendous platform and i strongly encourage you to uh to uh, look up some trade partner videos to see what it does i'm going to just going to give you a really brief explanation of how i use trade partner to place on these trades and trade partner is my trading partner uh my trading partner it is my trading partner uh, it's my trading platform that I created specifically because no other trading platform allows me to place on the trades that I place on without watching the market. And so I don't want to watch the market all day. I want to place on the trades. And when I have a trade filled, I want it to automatically place on another trade. And I can do this sequentially. And this is what I've done here. So the uh, order number one is my core trade. And you can see it's uh, selling the 51295 call and buying 154299 uh, call. And I'm doing it at a credit of one, as you can see here in the action group one. This is the order group. Execute order one at $1 credit. It's a day order. And I'm going to do a trade size of two. That's what this two is. So I did two of those. Is now, what I do with Trade Partner is I can say, okay, if order one is filled then i'm going to execute order two i'm not going to execute order two until order one is filled because i don't want to just buy an option right so order number two does is not placed until order number one is filled and what is order number two i want to buy one may 4th 297 call at a buck 60. So execute order two at 160 on a limit, and that order is, is uh, placed as soon as order number was filled. So as you can see, order number one was filled, and then order number two was also filled, and then the market tanked. The market tanked to about 282, and I made the credit on this trade. And what was the credit? I actually made a little bit more than the credit that was on this trade. And what was the credit on this trade? It was 40 cents. After I bought the third option for a buck sixty, that brought my total credit, which started off at two dollars, down to only forty dollars. And so what I essentially did was I took my profit potential to the upside and I applied it to my risk, or my profit potential to the downside, and I applied it to my risk to the upside. It's kind of like algebra. I took from one side, I added it to the other and what I get is a risk-free projection trade. And what gives me the pricer, uh, the cheaper price on that option, right? So this was trading at about 230 when this order number one was filled. If I would have bought that at 230, I actually would have had a debit on the trade. I would have had a debit of 30 cents on the trade. I don't want a debit of 30 cents on the trade because that creates a risk to the downside and it creates some risk in what I call here this dead zone. And so what I did was I simply waited for price action and or time to bring in a cheaper price on the 297 call, cheaper than what it would have been had I been in that uh, option, or had I placed it at the time or at the same time. Now I could have bought a third option in the same order, right? I could have said, short two long three or i could have said short two long two long one and i could have done it all in one order and i would have created a debit on the trade which would have created some loss a little bit of risk to the downside if the market tanked which it did and it would have created some risk in what i call the dead zone which is between 300 and 302 and i don't want to do that and so all i needed to do was wait a little bit and by being patient, I was able to create a risk-free projection trade within 30 minutes of getting filled on the first core trade. That's how I did it. Now, how did I make a small killing? <laughs> well, this is really cool and all, right? But here's the kicker. Are you ready for this? As soon as as i create a risk-free projection trade which happened in 30 minutes and sometimes it happens quicker but this particular one happened in 30 minutes guess what i do i place the whole thing on again i repeat the process and i start immediately 
And so what happened was, as soon as my core trade was filled at a credit of $2, I then placed on through Trade Partner. I didn't actually watch the market to do it, but Trade Partner actually then placed on a third option, a third long call order. That was filled within 30 minutes, and so Trade Partner replaced or or placed this order again. The short 2 May 1st, 295 calls, long 2 May 4th, 299 calls at a $2 credit. And about 30 minutes later, the market moved back up, filled me on this credit, and again, as soon as that was filled, I placed on another order to buy a third long. This process, this sequence, happened three times that day. Three times. Which means that I created a risk-free projection trade that had a minimum gain to the downside of almost $200. It was actually $160 exactly. That was minimum gain to the downside. The profit peak now was at $1,000. And my profit potential to the upside in the dead zone was at about $200, almost $200 as well. It's about $150 as well and there's one reason why this is not higher there's one reason why this is not higher it's because the last sequence that i placed on did not finish at the end of the day and i'll get to that here in a second okay so this is a process for stacking profits so i placed on one trade tuesday okay this is one day the trade that I'm talking that I've just shown you was based on Wednesday's trades. Wednesday, two days before the market, uh, the end of the trade. However, I started this whole process on Tuesday, and on Tuesday I placed on a single trade, and that single trade, that single core trade, did not get the second order filled. The core trade was filled. I placed on the third, uh, the order for the third long. It was not filled. It was, however, filled on Wednesday morning. And so Wednesday morning, after it was filled, I started the process all over again with a different trade. And there were three trades that were filled on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, that those completed. And I started that process all over again. And three trades were completed on Thursday, giving me a total credit of $919 per spread. A minimum profit to the downside okay so I essentially had seven trades going by the end of the week on Friday this particular trade which is a little bit different than what I showed you earlier uh, essentially the same structure but at different strike prices this particular trade was filled Thursday afternoon with about one hour left and so my second order to buy a third long was not filled on Thursday. However, as you already saw, I already had six other risk-free projection trades working. And so it really didn't matter if I didn't have that third option filled on this one because my overall trades looked like this. This is showing the 900 the, actually a little bit better than $900 minimum profit to the downside. To the upside, we're talking about over $2,200 at the profit peak, but because I have all these other extra longs, I have no risk to the downside. Again, the minimum, uh, minimum profit projection is at about $1,000 if SPY were to skyrocket. However, SPY tanked it tra it clo and closed at the end of this trade at about $282. And I ended up making about $1,700 on this trade, a little bit more than $1,700 on this trade. Now, I did not, if you'll recall, I did not start off with that $500 risk trade. Okay, this is how one of the trades started off. This is not how I started off the very beginning trade on Tuesday. I actually started off with a smaller risk. Okay, so this was not my first trade of the week. This is why I was willing to take a little bit more risk on this particular trade because I 
already had another trade in place that had gone risk-free, or risk-free projection, I should say. And so at the time, even though it says I was risking $500, because this was not my first trade, I actually was not risking $500 to the upside, and I'll show you why. Okay, This was my first trade of the week. This was the one that was placed on Tuesday. And this is the trade that um, did not have the third long filled by the end of Tuesday. So the max risk on this trade, if, Scott, if SPY would have continued moving higher, was about $300, not $500. So it was a smaller risk trade. And you can start off this whole process with smaller risk trades. Absolutely. You don't have to take on the big $500 risk trades to begin with. I wanted to show you that $500 risk trade just to show you that you can start off with a $500 risk trade and have a very high probability of stacking these profits. Okay, so the max risk was $300, but it had a very low probability of realizing that $300 because the trade ends on Friday. And if SPY tanked, I was guaranteed to make at least $252 on this trade. And you'll notice that, uh, again, at the time that this trade was filled, the market was trading at around 290 and the break even on this particular trade was all the way to 295. So if I was never filled on my third long on this particular trade, I still had a very solid trade in place, one that has a very high probability of success and a very low probability of realizing the maximum risk. Now what happened was on Wednesday morning on the open, I was filled on my third long and this was the first trade that I completed the sequence on. And this is why I was not risking $500 at 305 because this trade has unlimited profit potential. And you can see here that at 301, 302, we're talking about making $200. By the time you get to 305, this actually would have been making $500. And so I have more than enough room to place on this trade because I knew that my original trade, even if I did not get filled on my third long on the second trade, my original trade would be making money at 305 and my risk would not be $500, wouldn't be anywhere close to $500. So that's the process. It, this, what I've shown you, I cannot overemphasize as an incredible way to take advantage of options because if you're looking at, for example, a situation where you're able to do this th three times in one day, and let's say you start off with a lower risk trade. Let's say you start off with three a $300 risk trade initially, and you're able to build this in one day, the, the probability of long-term success with this is astronomical. Even if you get caught in one of these trades where you never are able to place on that third long and you just take the risk of that trade. Fine, whatever. The next week comes along, or the next day comes along, or whatever the case is, the probability of back and forth market action is what this is taking advantage of. If it moves up and I get filled on my credit and then it moves down a point and I get filled on my third long and then it moves back up a point and I get filled on my credit again and it moves down a point, it can do that a lot during the day. And during the week, if you do that every single day because you've, you're stacking on previous trades, man, it is absolutely one of the most powerful, effective approaches that you can ever apply to trading options. So here's the, met, the process, and it's very simple. And I told you the logic of this is really simple. You start with a simple core trade. You place an order to bring that trade to a risk-free projection status, and you rinse and repeat as often as the market will allow. And what I mean by rinse and repeat is you do it again and again and again as often as the market will allow. And sometimes these trades become astronomical. Starting off with a $300 risk, you don't have to have very many good weeks, good weeks to to do really, really well with this approach. So what I do is every Tuesday morning, I provide a live trade webinar where I'm going through the process of 
picking the core trade and picking the third long that I'm going to add to that trade. And I'm going to sh I show what trades are available. I show how to make those trades risk-free projection. I show you the traps to avoid. And I'm going to tell you right now there are traps to avoid. I've shown you a very powerful approach. I obviously don't have time to show you everything about that approach, but there are some traps that you need to avoid. In fact, they, there are times where if you don't put these together properly, if you're not taking into consideration what I showed you about volatility, for example, and you think you're putting on a risk-free projection trade, and so because you think you're putting on a risk-free projection trade, you go big. And you you put on 10, 20, 100 of these things. And lo and behold, you fell into a trap and you didn't do it right. And you, instead of having a risk-free trade, you ended up losing $2,000. I've seen it happen. I'm going to show you how to avoid those traps. I'm also going to show you how to minimize the overall risks. And you can do that. You can take smaller risk trades and do this on a slower basis but have much smaller risks on these trades. And then I'm going to show you exactly how to stack these profits during the week, because during the week, I don't place on the exact same trade. So I'll show you all of that. And I do this every Tuesday. And I often have another webinar either on Thursday or Friday, depending on market action, just to update everybody and maybe to add something else to the mix. Absolutely invaluable stuff that you learn on these calls. So remember, you have to take advantage of all three of these principles, the PPD, leveraging price movement, or accounting for price movement, and the volatility changes that are absolutely predictable with this. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. Sometimes during these calls, profit stacker isn't the best trade. And so, the nine, for example, if stocks tank, I'm not going to be doing a profit stacker trade. I'm going to be doing a 911 emergency trade. And if that's the case, then I'm going to show you the 911 emergency trade that I'm doing or trades. And I'll show you several opportunities. Like that $930 trade that accounted for market movement that had such a small risk, wide, wide profit potential, such a small risk that I showed you earlier. That was a 911 emergency trade. If if SPY begins to tank and stocks begin to tank, which they very well may do, based on the current economic situation, I'm going to give you those trades. Or if stocks continue to rebound and recover and they, and they move into the option insanity zone, I'm going to show you both profit stacker approach or profit stacker trades because they there will be some profit stacker trades that exist if the market moves up. And I'm also going to show you option insanity trades because those are the better ones in those kind of market conditions. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving you all three of these. Sometimes the best trade is going to be an option insanity. Sometimes it's going to be a 911 emergency trade. And sometimes it's going to be a profit stacker. And then sometimes there might be a marriage of all three. And I'll show you that as well. And so what I'm doing is I'm not limiting myself or you to a forced can trade every week. What I'm doing is I'm showing you how to, to move with the volatility, to make slight changes with the volatility. And because I'm doing that, because this is by far the most effective way to take advantage of weekly options in SPY and, and Monday and Wednesday and Friday expirations, this will be the most demand product that I have. This is why I call it my triple play option approach, because I'm actually taking advantage of the best situation in the current circumstances. And again, if you want to be a profitable options trader, this is how you want to do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all three of these approaches and access to my webinars, which are at least two times a week. Okay, I have one on Tuesday, then I have one either on Thursday or Friday, depending on market action. And I'm going to give those to you, $497 up front. You access my previous trades, my previous calls. You access course material 
and you get access to the first month of live calls two times a week. After that, you only pay $199 a month to continue to access my live trade calls. They're going to pay for themselves. Of that, I have no question. But if ever you don't think it's worth it, then you just cancel. You can cancel at any time, and there's no questions asked, no long-term obligation. But I know you're going to be want to take advantage of these for as long as you possibly can. Plus, you're also going to get access to any trade reports that come out and any trade signals through Trade Partner that are provided. And that's just an added bonus. And those are going to be very, those are very, very valuable reports. Okay, so you can go ahead and uh, take advantage of this either by clicking the link be uh, below this video where you can sign up or you can call toll free 877-781-0264 or the local is 412-282-8256 and you can go ahead and get involved. So if you have a single week, a single week that could end up like this, starting with only a $300 risk, you tell me whether this is worth it. I showed you exactly what I'm doing. What you're going to be getting is you're going to be getting my exact trades that I'm doing. And you're going to be able to follow along because they're live trade calls. I'll be placing the trades live on the calls. If you're not able to uh, uh, attend live, you will be able to access the recordings of those calls. And if they're available the next day, you can, uh, you can get involved the next day. Or if they're not available the next day, uh, then maybe you can change the structure a little bit. Now, again, I'll show you how to do all of that on these calls. It'll be well, well worth it. Now, some of you are going to ask, what if I already have one of these strategies? What if I already have option insanity? Or what if I already have 911 emergency trades? Well, if that's the case, give us a call. We will work this out for you. I will tell you that if you're currently attending the live trades, if you currently have access to the live trades, you will continue to have access to the live trades through the end of your subscription to these live trades. So, uh, so these this combination that I'm doing, this triple play that I'm doing on these live calls, you will still have access to if you are, for example, taking advantage of the 911 trades. All right. And by the way, at the time of this presentation, of the original presentation, I placed on another trade live in this call and the next day it became a risk-free trade so this was placed on this original presentation was done on friday afternoon with about an hour left of trading i placed on a, a trade live friday afternoon for the next week and then monday morning on the open immediately the trade was brought to a risk-free projection trade so that's how quickly it can happen. And yes, you can start much sooner. If you attend the live calls, I'll go through all of these and give you all of the opportunities that you can take advantage of, including some of the smaller risk ones. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate you attending today's presentation. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you are excited to get going with this. My next call is going to be on Tuesday. So be sure to sign up before Tuesday if you do not already have access. Everyone have a wonderful day.